Making good puzzles in Portal 2 is hard. Very hard, in fact. Ask any of the most experienced puzzle designers in the community how long it takes them to create a single puzzle, and they will often answer with weeks, if not months. Sometimes even years. I've spent a lot of time designing puzzles in Portal 2, more time than I probably should have. Time that I could have spent studying, working, partying, even generally enjoying life. But alas, it is too late for me now. But wouldn't it be nice if you could just somehow design your puzzles in less time? Enjoy the benefits without suffering the costs? Maybe, just maybe, might one be able to use a computer to design puzzles? No complicated AI business, just some simple code that outputs puzzles. Some hard puzzles that genuinely stumps people for a while. Press the button, get a puzzle. It sounds I impossible, right? Surely a computer could never understand all the intricacies of Portal 2 puzzles. Surely not, right? Well, I managed to do it. And the puzzles, they were hard. And here's how I did it. Portal 2 is a game in which the player has great freedom, formalizing all the possible moves, items, interactions, tricks, etc. into a computer for it to understand what I'm even trying to do would be completely impossible. No, if I were to have any success with this plan, the setup had to be much simpler than that. If we disregard any timing based move, Portal 2 becomes a game that's fully about the positions of various things the player, their portals, and of course the cubes. If I would simply avoid timed moves, then in theory I would be able to represent the full current state of the puzzle by just specifying the locations of these objects. An exception to that rule is the laser cube, which in addition to a location also has an orientation. It aims somewhere. This would complicate matters way too much, so quickly I decided no laser cubes, it's just too difficult. But how would I specify the location of, say, the player? I wouldn't want to somehow input a ground plan into the computer and record the location of the player by which voxel they would be in. That would just be way too many states, and if the computer would try to solve the puzzle step by step, it would waste a lot of time just aimlessly walking in circles, literally. Now the approach had to be more rigorous. The map should consist of a few very clearly defined areas with the property that it does not matter where in the area you are, it would only matter which area you were in. This brought me to the idea of making a map that would consist of only separate islands, all with a single portal surface. And then all that would be relevant is which island the player or the portal would be on. Much easier once again. But would I separate the islands by fizzlers or by goo? And this brought up another important issue. I wanted my computer to create the puzzles for me with as little input from me as possible. How would I handle connections between items in my map? How would my computer decide where a receiver or button should be and that would open a certain fizzler or activate a certain element? I had no idea how to do this, other than letting my computer somehow brute force all possible puzzles and try to see which one was the most interesting. This would take way too much time, there are just too many conceivable puzzles, even in a fairly simple setup. How could I keep things simple? And here I had a ridiculous thought. Maybe I did not want to have any items in my puzzle. None at all. But then you might ask, how would you possibly make a puzzle, let alone a hard one? And some people might think of one of my previous videos, in which I explain exactly how one can do this, an endeavor that resulted in the famous No Elements collection. And I gave this some thought, but still it seemed to me that the layout of such momentum-based puzzles would have way too much freedom for the computer to conceivably concoct interesting layouts by brute force. Now it had to be even simpler. But what could possibly be even simpler than this? 
and then it hit me. Portal 2 is not just a single player game, it can also be played cooperatively with two players and two sets of portals. To anyone who has ever tried to play well designed co op puzzles, there is no doubt that co op can be extremely challenging, even with very few items, because the two players and four portals allow for a lot of non trivial swapping, exchanging, and permuting that can be really confusing and abstract for those who are not very well versed with this kind of logic. So this would be my puzzle. It would be a Koa puzzle with a map consisting of just a couple of different islands. And I did not want to include connections, so it would separate the islands by goo, not by fizzlers. And without connections, cubes also seems redundant, so I wouldn't need them either. The players would have to use their portals to travel between the islands. Only one thing remained. Which islands could one see from where? Here, one has considerable freedom, but I wasn't sure what good loops would do, because the players would in many scenarios only ever traverse one side of the loop and not bother with the other. So in graph theoretic terms, the layout I was probably looking for should be a tree. But where would the branches be? Again, I opted to just explore the simplest case. No branching at all, just a long string of islands where you could only see the island immediately next to you. And how long would the string be? Now that's the only variable I would put into my code, and the output would be a puzzle with that layout. Now if that's not low effort puzzle making, I don't know what is. So the idea was simple. The players would enter on the first island, and then the computer would just simulate all the possible moves that the players could make, moving themselves and their portals about the map, and keeping track of all the configurations that had already been reached, and taking into account which ones are new. And the total number of states is finite, so at some point this process would stop. And then the hope would be that the states with the longest solution path would, with some luck, result in good puzzles. Practically, I would keep the entire configuration stored as a tuple of six numbers. The locations of the two players, and the locations of their four portals. And if there were n islands, then all of these would be an integer from 1 to n. But the portals, they would get one special state, minus one, if they wouldn't be present at all. A so-called null portal. And so the starting point would be 1 minus 1 minus 1, 1 minus 1 minus 1. Next, I had to think about all the possible moves, and it had to be very precise. Player 1 could move through any of four possible portals, as well as player 2. Also, player 1 could shoot one of two portals, and player 2 as well, in as many as three different locations. The island the player is on, the island before, or the island after. And in total at each stage, that would mean that the computer would need to consider no less than 20 possible moves. But not all moves are possible at all times. For example, if player 1 wants to move through his first portal, two conditions need to be fulfilled. He needs to be on the same island as his first portal, and his second portal must simply exist somewhere. More complicated is moving a portal because there's three possible locations, and the location of the new portal would be the location of the current player plus one, zero, or minus one. And they could place the new portal unless one of their portals is already in that location. Plus and one, when that island zero actually or exists, minus one, which is not always the case, place the new portal the first unless or one the of the last portals island. is already. In. Now, for a state that can be reached by a fixed number of steps minimum, the computer would check all the conditions and record the outcome of each move if possible, and compare it to all the states that came before it. And if the state was reached before, it would disregard this move. And if the state was new, then it would add it to the list of new states, adding one to the least number of steps it took to reach this point. And finally, the code would stop when no new states would be found. And there you have it, the longest possible puzzles within this simple setup, quite literally scraping the bottom of the barrel when it comes to this layout. For small chains of islands, the code would run very quickly, because the number of possible states is only very small. However, the larger the number of islands became, the longer the code would take to run. For one or two islands, no real puzzles are possible, 
but with three islands, it found a nice state which would take 12 moves to reach, which interestingly included a double null portal, as you can see from the minus ones. And now it was up to me, the human, to make this into an actual puzzle, and it did this by using a double piston setup to the exit. The players would need two null portals to drop the cubes onto the buttons at the right time. So that's three islands done, and who would ever suspect I got this cute map idea from a bit of computer code. For four islands there turned out to be an 18 step configuration, which again included a null portal, and once more it was up to me to think about a setup in game that would force the players and their portals to be in these precise locations. And I managed, yielding this very cute four island puzzle where the exact setup found by the computer is necessary to collect the cube and open the exit. For five islands, there were various different configurations that required 22 moves, as well as some others that would take a similar amount of moves if the player started on an island different from the first. Any interesting null portals here faded from the longer solutions, so I was able to create this very simple dual gate setup that would force both players to be present on certain islands with their portals in certain locations to open the gates. And to address the ambiguity of switching the players, I forced them to raise staircases to the exit afterwards, forcing one player to really be on one side and the other on the other. And that's a few more puzzles down. And this continued for six islands, so where up to symmetry a unique 28 step configuration was found, and for seven steps a unique 34 step solution was found, and for eight islands a few different configurations showed up with 37 steps, and one of these I was able to reduce to six islands by inserting a fizzler, because I noticed that the players only really traversed past some of the center islands once, so separating them by a fizzler helped make me make the map a bit more compact. The crown jewel, really, was the true eight island puzzle that seemed to optimally combine all the tricks that the computer unknowingly found before while reaching all these tricky puzzle states, dynamically involving all islands and tying it all together in a very nice way. But what's interesting about the seven and eight island puzzles is that it's actually impossible to reach the state in which the players have swapped their locations, so I could change out my exit setup to just pressing two buttons. Then there would still be ambiguity for the player which player needs to end up where, and that would add a little bit to the difficulty. With more than eight islands, nothing new shows up. The longest puzzle states are duplicates of the eight island setup, but now with a slightly longer stretch of islands in the middle that the players really only traverse once and never to bother with them again. I had to analyze all these sets of numbers in my mind to compare the puzzles to each other, which was tricky, but I managed. And just to be sure, I even ran the 10 island case, which took a few hours to run because my code is dreadfully unoptimized, but it was just barely still manageable to do it. And as expected, no new interesting puzzles were found, so I'm pretty sure that for longer setups there will also not be any interesting puzzles. This is really all you can get from this idea. So I released these puzzles as a series to my workshop, highlighting all the most interesting puzzles from three to eight islands under the name Foresight. Previously, I have not disclosed that these puzzles were made with computer assistance, but now I've updated the descriptions with this disclaimer. I wanted to see if people would pick up on it, or if anyone would question how I could ever come up with these insanely abstract ideas. The portal and player swapping required to beat these puzzles is seriously devious. If you want to play the 9 maps in this collection for yourself, they're linked at the top of the description below. Nobody called me out on it. No one did. Whether or not this social experiment was a success or not, I'll leave up for you to debate. And make no mistake, these puzzles are not easy at all. The logic is very abstract and perhaps they're more easily solved using pen and paper than we're actually playing them in-game. And some might argue that these puzzles are also not very fun, but I guarantee you that you will learn a lot of very useful co-portal management ideas from this series, which is how I ended up advertising the collection as pure co-op portal management training. I would also like to advertise here an amazing series by Elytron, who together with his partner Chairman, 
tackle the whole series and record it with commentary, their struggles, triumphs and thoughts for anyone to enjoy and admire really. Definitely show them your support by leaving a like, comment or even subscribing to the channel. He can shoot one here. We just get over here. Then he moves this one back to the beginning. We get back to the beginning. And here's the key part where Chairman can move the portal here. He can go through, but I will stay. And what I can do is I can override his portal with my purple portal. If I can pick it up. Amusingly, they found that some of my puzzles were broken, allowing much simpler solutions than I had anticipated. And did this mean that the computer made a mistake? Or perhaps my code was wrong in some places? No, certainly not. It was me, the dumb, fallible human, that made a mistake in forcing the configuration the computer outputted into the actual map. So by the time this video has been released, I should have fixed all those issues so you can enjoy all the maps in the way that my dear computer had intended them to be enjoyed. But anyway, that was all I wanted to share about this experiment. I hope that you found it as interesting as me and that you enjoyed watching this little video about it. Feel free to leave a comment and share your thoughts about other puzzle layouts I could try to optimize with some code and any other comments are welcome too, of course. If you liked the video, you could also consider subscribing if you want to, but no pressure at all. Regardless, thanks a lot for watching and I'll see you all again in the next video. Bye!